Hello, I'm Bill Harrison. Welcome to Life Questions, a program that provides biblical solutions to your questions about life. Without question, life presents us with so many twists and turns, taking us down paths of life that can be quite unsettling. But God's Word promises to be a guide for us in the decisions about life. And so we have invited a group of local ministers to respond to your questions that you, the viewers, have sent us to answer. And uh, as we start, I'd like to introduce you to these guest ministers right now. They have agreed to prayerfully consider your questions. First, we have uh, Pastor Terry Hunt of the Tri-County Family Assemblies of God mm -hmm. in Bluffton, mm -hmm. followed by Pastor Mark Bailiff of Union Chapel Missionary Church in Lima, and then Pastor Dan Messner of Shawnee Alliance Church, also of Lima, and the Reverend Father Alexander Witt of Holy Trinity Catholic Church of the Coldwater Cluster. We're happy to have all of you with us today. Good Thank you. Good you know, th this program, of course, is taped, and so uh, the question I, I want to ask you to start off with has, um, is going to probably be a dated situation, but in a general sense, we know that the, the impeachment hearings are going on in Congress right now. And I want to ask you, looking at, at what this is doing to the country and the opinions, the sharp opinions that people have on both sides of the political mm -hmm. aisle, this, I think it's, we can easily say, has been dividing our country, this, this yes. whole issue. Mm -hmm. What role do we as Christians play? What can we do to bring about healing? I mean, no matter where Congress is in the process of impeachment, what can and should we as Christian, mm -hmm. particularly Christian leaders, be doing at this point? Just one brief thought, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, I, have, I would wrestle when I'm, when I'm with a group of people, even my church, wherever, mm -hmm. to speak negatively of the Democrats, to speak negatively of the process of impeachment or even the inquiry. And I think part of the practical side, yes, pray, and we live in a, you know, all mm -hmm. that. But to be careful <clears throat> as a leader, what I say in that circle of influence. Yes. And it's easy to jump on mm -hmm. the Republican wagon. I am a Republican, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. but instead to lead at a, le at a level different than that and say, look, we need to pray for our president. We need to pray for the process. Yes, he needs to be accountable as any president does, but to be careful how we lead as, mm -hmm. as pastors to our flock and to those people we have influence on. That's, that's harder to do than you might think because a lot of these things frustrate me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I think that's one of the first things that comes to my mind. I believe it's uh, <clears throat> Prophet Jeremiah that said, uh, you know, there's always something in which a, a nation glories in. It's military, it's economy, it's education. But he says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the, the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth, glorieth in this, and that is that he knows God, yes. that God is a, lo a God of love, righteousness, and judgment. I think, as as Mark uh, alluded to, there our judgments here in this in this land must be upon the word of God, and and uh, it's it's not it's glorying in that we know God. That's really the issue in the country, and and always has been. Um, the Bible does say also, Paul said, in the last days there will be perilous times. Mm -hmm. These are things that. It, we can expect it, it's, but God is a big God, yes. and, and <clears throat> God good. can pour out His blessings, and He, yes. and God does want to, and yeah. He'll never withhold that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is something that we can do, and that is to continue to, to, <clears throat> to preach and present the gospel, the word of God. That is the answer for mankind. It is. That yeah. is the answer for this nation. Getting right. back really to the Bible, and, and that cuts across all. Uh, political parties. Yeah, yeah, and you know it's it, it's so beautiful that you were talking about like who do we glory in, yes. and uh, it reminds me of Saint Paul when he says, "Save me, but that I glory in the in the That's cross right. of our Lord That's Jesus right. Christ." Right, and mm -hmm. and just um, that there's something to be said for willingly entering into and embracing the crosses of our suffering. That's right, and <laughs> that is both as an individual, as a community, and even as a country. Um, embracing the cross and uh, it, it's one of the Catholic books in the Old Testament but um, when you were talking about mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah and and when you were talking about um, just the the need for prayer uh, 
I couldn't help but think of the uh, Tobit and the Archangel Raphael. And he reveals himself as the Archangel Raphael and he kind of gives this missive from God to Tobit and he praises Tobit for not only for praying but for fasting and almsgiving mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and which is always just a, such a beautiful way to unite our sufferings to the sufferings of Christ, to empty ourselves of those things that we might be tempted to glory in, and mm -hmm. instead right. glory in that cross. Right. Amen. Pastor Mester, what are you, what are you <clears throat> telling your members of your congregation? Well, obviously on Sundays, uh, I do not make political issues or political mm -hmm. statements. Mm -hmm. I am not there to right. involve yes. people in that. I encourage right. but my people. in terms people, of the division. That's right. I mm -hmm. encourage my people mm -hmm. to become involved in their community, mm -hmm. to be involved with uh, raising up leaders that have values. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we're very fortunate in this area to have a great representation with Jim Jordan. Uh, but mm -hmm. the focus of the church has always been mm -hmm. well, how do we win? those who are lost. That's right. That's it. You know, you look at the That's Apostle right. Paul and yeah. the Roman Empire. How did the Roman Empire get defeated? It wasn't mm -hmm. because we took political <clears throat> positions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was, as he says, we win by becoming, you know, a Jew, we become like a Jew, or become like a Greek, we become like a Greek, we like become like a slave, so that we will win. Mm -hmm. And, right. you know, the, God's going to guide and direct this nation like he is <laughs> any other nation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I somewhat wrestle with what people watch and, mm -hmm. you know, try to focus on mm -hmm. one particular type of programming to reinforce what they believe. And I think many can't even understand the other's point of view mm -hmm. because they've never taken the time to learn that. And yet I encourage my people, first of all, you will always keep Christ first. That's good. You will pray for your <laughs> nation mm -hmm. and, you know, pray like Paul said in, in second Tim or first Timothy, first Timothy he says, second I pray that there will be peace yes. in the land, that the gospel <laughs> will go forward. Yeah. And I have a little bit different perspective than most people. I, you know, I am old. And I watched, I watched what took place between 1965 and 1975 in this country. Yep, right. And, you know, Ohio State was burning to the ground. And Kent State, we had people dying. You know, we're not Vietnam at that War, stage. Over right. the Vietnam War. Yeah, yeah, over the Vietnam War and many other That's things, true. too. True. And so it's not like our nation hasn't been through these mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. yes. But I think the church fails by not living out their faith Amen. and becoming involved outside the church yes. in the system, you know, like, you know, the Patriots or whatever, there's organizations, there's lots of them out there. Mm -hmm. And everyone needs to be involved. And of course, the bottom line is, we need to pray to our God because yeah. he is the God of nations. And, that's, and good. that's the reason I brought the question up in the <clears> first place, is that what we need to be doing outside of the church, because the, mm -hmm. uh, this issue is everywhere in society. I mean, you know, John and Martha are sitting around the table, no doubt today, talking about this issue, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so I've been criticized in my church because I won't make a political statement right. from the pulpit. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I will make a, you know, we have a power to vote. And I encourage that all the time. But the question is, I'm not going, am I going to stand up and divide my church? Because I have people on both yeah. sides of the fence. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. What's the unifying purpose of the church? It's Jesus Christ. How That's do right. I exalt mm -hmm. him? That's right. Yeah. I believe this time is the, is the finest hour for the body of Christ. It is. Because the, the body of Christ is who God uh, has, is using. We, we have, Paul the Apostle says, we have the words of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. We have this message of healing and, and help and hope. And it's the body of Christ. Now the body of Christ has got to stay in tune with God's word too. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, too often there's, there's issues there. Uh, and, and, and that's the problem, you know. The church has got to uh, rise up. Mm -hmm. I, I believe the world is looking to a, to a, a, a church that uh, uh, has the power flowing through them. Uh, where, is, where is the power of the New Testament church? Mm -hmm. Where is that? And this may be off the topic a little bit where you're going, but look what's happening in Iran. 
the number of believers. Right. There is a what we would call a revival taking place. That's right. In one that's country, right. we would Amen. say that would never take place. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the gospel message. It is. Mm -hmm. The that's gospel right. message transforms politics. lives. That's right. And you know what the failure of the church is? We don't preach the gospel Amen. transforming power. Amen. There. And it's not power that we have strength right. over anyone. It's power of the inward transformation of God's word and that's the Holy exactly, Spirit. That's, that's really that's good. exactly right. I yeah. have seen in the past, though, ministers who have taken to the pulpit, even um, even uh, on television, mm -hmm. to come down one side of the political aisle or the other, which I think, maybe you agree, agree or disagree, which I think adds to the division. <coughs> well, I think it's a dangerous I think it adds thing. To the, well, I think <laughs> I you also think lose your 501c3 <laughs> in doing a thing like that, <laughs> that, that as, as well. Sure. But, 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 they're, yeah. they're, but when you talk about the division, it exists even within a family. I mean, you... You know, people are right. going to be going yes. to the turkey dinner for Thanksgiving, and this issue is going to be discussed around yes. the table. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's going to it's going to divide families. And it is during mm -hmm. the Thanksgiving week, and it is absolutely right. is. Yeah. And I'm saying that this is why we as ministers must be about the business of mm -hmm. bringing about healing in the midst of this. this is, mm -hmm. You're right, it, this is our finest hour, yeah. if yeah. we take advantage if, of if, it. Yeah, right. if the church is right, if the church is on top of it, this is our finest hour. When there was a crisis, uh, we are to be those interventionists of, of God's, of God, you know. God, Jesus was the greatest interventionist of all. I mean, he came into a chaotic world to bring it back to normalcy. That's right. We are his vessels, we are his instruments. And he has given us this treasure in earthen, earthen vessels mm -hmm. for this chaotic world. And it's, you know, as uh, we've alluded to here, it's always been that way. I remember the Vietnam War too. Oh, yeah. And after time That's I thought horrible. about that and uh, with what's happening today and you know, how different is it? There seems to be a, a little deeper kind of thing here today. And as we draw closer to the coming of the Lord, I, I believe those things will be deeper seated. But um, no, we are, the church is uh, the instrument that God uh, is using. Mm -hmm. not, it's not the politicians, you know. No, they we don't. gotta vote for the best that yeah. we, we feel, uh -huh, uh -huh. but they are not, they are not the answer. No, we are the ones that are commissioned to carry this the answer. Right. right. And, and, and when I say we, I don't mean just ministers, it's lay the, people alike. We're, church, we're yeah. all called as Christians to go ye into all mm -hmm. the world we're, to right. provide right. that healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And. Uh, uh, baptizing some children and um, Catholics we have a little different theology of baptism I think but that's not the point here mm. the point is that um, during the rite of baptism in, in, of, of these children um, or adults if they're if they're coming to us later in life we have this anointing with the sacred chrism and uh, there's a reference within the prayer to, to the anointing of priest, uh, priest, prophet, and king of the Lord, and how that, that child or that person is being incorporated into that mm -hmm. priestly, prophetic, and, and kingly role. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, I think, what, what we need to acknowledge as Christians is that we are priests, you know? Not the same sort of priest that, you know, as ministers you guys are, as priests mm -hmm. that I am, mm -hmm. but, but what is a priest? A priest is one who is called to offer up the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What is the mm -hmm. sacrifice of a Christian people, a people that belongs to God? Mm -hmm. The sacrifice of their mm -hmm. life. Right. the sacrifice of dedicating everything to their life. They're called to be prophets who, you know, I think growing up, I always thought that a prophet was one who looked off into the future and mm -hmm. predicted the future. And, you know, when we read the Old Testament, a lot of prophets did that. But primarily what a prophet is, is it's someone who speaks God's word in the here and now. Yeah, that's and, right. and we need that's the good. Christian people to speak <coughs> right, God's yeah, word. That's absolutely true. And, and to and to find the glory in their identity, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. like you were saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, this isn't a, uh, an issue necessarily of perspectives in a way. It's almost like the public discourse has become an issue of identity where, you know, if you don't identify with mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Democratic Party or the Republican Party or with this party or with that party, then you're not a person who's coming at me with goodwill. You're a person right. who wants the destruction of our country. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I, instead, sorry, right, just, right, to, right, just right. to finish up the kingly right. part, instead yes, we have to right. identify ourselves as that kingly people that we have been adopted into God's family. Mm -hmm. And that that family, it's beautiful how you use the word rise up. And mm -hmm. you were talking yeah, about this yeah. as well, that it's not yes. this or that, but it's, it's a rising up, it's a transcendence. Yes. And, and, and what's the power behind the transcendence? Love, yeah. I mean, that's the hallmark exactly. of Christianity. God is love. People and, and that there is no darkness. live out their priestly role, as Peter would say, that do it out of love, they win, and win equals reconciliation. Yeah.
That's the love good. of God. God's love. Yeah. Okay, God. Well, listen, we, this is spirit, yes, this has man. been quite a discussion. Yeah, it's been quite a discussion. Great. I'm being right. called on to take a break at this time. But, okay. Um, I, I thank you for that input, and I certainly help, hope that it helps somebody that's yeah. watching in today. Yes because we, we just need to hear this and uh, be encouraged. And let us continue to pray for our nation as they move through this process, yes. that God's will will ultimately be done. Uh, and remember what um, 1 Timothy chapter 2 says when we are called on to pray for our nation's leaders. Yes. That's right. That's right. Not pray yeah. that God kill them, not pray <laughs> that <laughs> we, we pray yeah, that God right. will give them insight right. to yeah. make right decisions. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we're changing the conversation now to something that's very near and dear to the hearts of a lot of parents. Parents who have raised their children uh, with uh, certain Christian values and the like, and when those children become grown and the parents go home to visit them in their own home setting, they find that the children, these adult children, are not living the way they've been taught. And it's very hurtful when they see the child embracing certain values of the world. And what do you do about that? I mean, these are adult children. I am grateful to the Lord and, and, and blessed with a great family for a great heritage. And my children and all of my grandchildren as well, all saved, serving God. And, you know, and the Bible tells us I have no greater joy than to see my children walking in the truth. That's right. There is no greater joy. And so I can imagine that there's no greater hurt and pain than to see your children not walking in the truth. And, and one of the things I've learned is that, you, you know, what we teach them, we teach them as little children to sing in church. We sing these songs, you know, all the children's songs. And it gets, that gets into them. And, you know, what you, we've taught them remains. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not mm -hmm. depart. Well, I, you know, but they are departing, some of them. So what is that saying? You know, I don't, I don't know, but inside they'll never forget yeah. what we've taught them. And there are moments when those things have got to come out in their hearts. Yeah. When we lay our head on the pillow at night and there's nothing else, that's, that's when I think they remember these things. Mm -hmm. so we can just, we just, as adult children, we, you know, we don't have control over them. We can't say, you're, you're, you're going with me. <laughs> um, but I think our, our position then would be just to pray, uh, praying and fasting, continuing to be an example, mm -hmm. and a consistent, a consistent example. You know, God can change. God can change. Uh, and I, you, know, you pray for people to, that know the Lord to come in their path. Yeah. You know, yeah. some parents take it very personally, however, yes. Pastor Hunt, That's they take true. it very personally That's because they're thinking, well, I have failed somewhere. Do we not have to understand that once those children become adults, they are making decisions of their own just like we did? Sure. Right. I'm, and, and I'm not trying to justify no. what they're doing outside of their parents' teaching, right. but it's they're now making their own decisions, it, right? It's yes. almost like a mercenary way of looking at God's love right? Like I have earned God making my children prosper in this way by my own love with him. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, like the key word mm -hmm. that you're talking, that you were talking about, Pastor, was um, consistency, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. that's got to be the mm -hmm. foundation of it all. If all of yes. a sudden they're 22 and their parents barge into their apartment or their house <laughs> and they say, I can't believe you're doing this, then, it's, then right. that's just going to blow up, right? But right. if you're consistent from, from the very mm -hmm. youngest ages, like mm -hmm. this is, this is how mm -hmm. the Lord invites us to live, that's right. then that's mm -hmm. going to make a huge witness. Yes. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but in addition to that, um, 
Oh shoot, I forgot the point that I was trying to make. But well, you're, you're too young for that. I know. <laughs> 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 Before you can start it's gonna be awful. Stuff. It's, it's the ones your age oh, that they're I'm, talking about. This is bad, <laughs> very bad. You, you, oh you know, I heard someone once say, though, the scripture you quoted by Pastor Hunt, tramp a child when he was young and the way he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart. That what, and I think it was Solomon who wrote that, mm -hmm. what was being conveyed there is that you train the child up in the natural bent mm -hmm. of the well, child. I've heard that as well. Yeah, you right. know, that if the child That's is true. bent on let's say mm -hmm. mathematics and sure, the like. Correct, right. you, you expose that child to a lot of those things because you, obviously that's the way that child is going to grow in life right. in yes, that way he won't depart. Yes. So, and I only say uh, that because that can relieve some parents of the guilt they must feel, <laughs> even yes. if they've done a good job of raising the yeah. child. And when he's, he or she is older, they're making, uh, they're, they're making their own choices. Yeah. Bill, I know it sounds well, sort of uh, uh, predictable, but when we pray for our children, and I, and I have a lot of parents like that in my church, and mm -hmm. I, I have two wonderful sons and six grandchildren, the whole bit. Mm -hmm. But when I pray, and I pray almost daily for my children, <laughs> so and do I. I, I encourage people to simply pray, God, bring them into mm -hmm. a reconciled relationship with you mm -hmm. that is pleasing to you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I suspect there's always going to be things in their growing up years, their maturity, that they might do things, think things that I would say, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. And yet... <laughs> Like you said, I probably did that too, but mm -hmm. yeah. mostly that they would live lives that are pleasing to God. Yeah. That's yes. what, that's how I pray. Right. Excellent. Amen. I, one point I think you made was a parent that has a child in their mind is not walking with the Lord. They do take it personally because they've sure. invested their life right. into it. Mm -hmm. They it did hurts. pray. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a personal experience. I mean, my oldest son went through a divorce. Well, I prayed for years for the right woman. And there's a lot to that story. He's remarried now to a very godly lady. And you know, the lesson that the Lord taught me was, now you have to have the heart of the Father. That's right. right. Yeah. That's and good. Very good. There's, yes, yes. You know, it's good. I, mm -hmm. I hope That's this good. isn't misunderstood. There's absolutely no guarantee just because you raised your child in a spiritual way, they're gonna walk that way. They're going to have to come to that decision and point down the road. You're absolutely right. And yeah. if you think about all the waiting that Christians do, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible constantly teaches us, let's wait. Mm -hmm. What is the one area we're all waiting? It's related to relationships. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's so true with our children. And sometimes some parents have to wait much longer to see the hand of God take his right. child. Mm -hmm. That's true his mm -hmm. child to bring him to that point. You know, we were discussing during the break a book that I'm reading, The Grace of God and the, and the Flaws of Men. And it's about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're the most flawed men there are. Not one of them would have been hired at a local <laughs> church because of how they lived and what they did. Mm -hmm. But in each of their cases, the promise mm -hmm. of God was still gonna come back to fulfill in their lives what he was gonna accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I encourage parents always to do that. You're gonna have to wait. It's painful waiting. Mm -hmm, but what mm -hmm. is God doing in your life to bring you to understand that grace in your life, which then can be extended to that child? So in time, God himself is going to raise up his child, his daughter, mm -hmm. apart from us. Yeah. You know, a, a great example I see is, is the, the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son. I was son. just we thinking that. that. Yeah. Yeah. And the father, I, he, I believe he went out every day looking down the, that path for his son to come back. I agree. He was there when his sure. son came back. He had to be there every day. Yeah, because he, he saw him coming way off coming. down the road. Yeah. Saw him way down. He was there and he was ready and his heart and attitude was set. When his son came back, he, we know the story, he embraced him, he kissed him, he, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a feast, it's mm -hmm. gonna be a celebration. My old son was dead, now he's alive, lost, and now he's found. It was an incredible, it's, 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 it's what you said, it's waiting, waiting trusting and most God. pastors when they preach that passage they talk about the son that went wayward that's right yes 
I don't think the story is about the wayward son. No. The, I think the, the story is about the father. Yeah. The, the yeah. father. And I think parents exactly. need to act like that father. Yeah. yeah. And I the child. And oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say I loved what you said about having the heart of the father, and and uh, but also I think there's something to be said about having the heart of a mother. And as we're talking about course, this, I was yes. thinking that not only of the prodigal son, but also of Mary at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in in that case, it wasn't Jesus who had rejected the truth, right? Right. But it was everybody around him. You know, even his most intimate disciples, sure. yeah. and she stood there. And yes. can you imagine a more painful waiting than no. looking up at her cross as, uh, as he's bleeding out and yeah. and just being there, yeah. mm -hmm. right? She doesn't say anything, or she says very little. We know for sure she was praying, right? Mm -hmm. That's what any of us would yeah. be doing yeah, if we sure. were privileged right. to stand at the it's foot of the cross. Same. Um, and she was probably praying with her son, you know, when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The start to that great psalm. She was probably taking it up in her heart. Yes. And, and we have yeah, to do right. that as well. Right. Um, yes. When we encounter people like that, we have to kind of take the, the stuff that they're going through yes. and, and bring that into our own interior life, bring that into our own heart and, and just look at them lovingly. Mm -hmm. And I think that that look of love of a motherly love can really just draw yeah. them back in yeah. because what That's they're it. going to discover when they reject Jesus Christ is that that world is just like the yes. prodigal son. That's right. That is not the world that they were created for. That is not the it's world exactly that they want. Right. That's and, exactly right. And they're going to be yes. looking for that comfort. That's right. You parent yes. your child according to their age. Mm -hmm. I'm a consultant to my sons. I have a great relationship yes. with them. They call me and talk to me. That's right. That's I right. can That's no true. longer tell them what to do. No, that's true. <laughs> I can share with them what God's that's doing right. in my life. Yes. I can share what I believe that God wants right. to do in their lives. But ultimately, I'm nothing more than a consultant to them. That's right. And yeah. when they will hear my voice, not my demands of their life. Exactly yeah, right. that's great. Yeah, I'm yes. going to go back to the prodigal son for just a minute, yes. uh, because there's been emphasis placed on uh, the father, of course, mm -hmm. the wayward son. The my son. younger of two sons. He's, He's got two master's degrees, master's of Div wow. divinity and master's of theology, and wow. I love to hear him. Yes. He talks about that son that never left yeah, home. Yeah, the, oh, that's the, the other side. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. talks that's about the story, behavior. Which is always a lot of the fun. Son that never left the people's eyes. There's a lot of <laughs> truths in that story. It covered so many yeah. different things, yeah. yeah. And he wasn't right. And no, son no. That, but but uh, what sort of love did he have for his father? The mercenary love. You never gave me once even a, a small right. goat to feed on with my friends. Yeah. And there was that expectation. Yeah. But we shouldn't have that expectation. This is a gift. This is a relationship with a father. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, Very yeah. good. And that's then the prodigal son, when he was laying with the with the pigs and all that. Yeah. <laughs> now he remembered who he was, mm -hmm. where he came from. But with the love of his father. The love of remember. his father. Yeah. He, Do we he, love he our knew. children that are gone away from what we yes. believe with a love that demonstrates yeah. the very love Jesus gave? You know, some say, if you do this, I don't want to ever see you again. Don't ever come back into this house. You Can't know, you, for, you know. They don't that forget that. So no, they, they don't. don't. They don't. They won't yeah. forget those no, words. No, no, that those are just words of death. death. Instead yeah. of right. restoring their dignity, you further right. degraded yeah. them. Right. Exactly. You, Bill, you one, really sealed it. One brief thought, yeah. and, and once and in a while, uh, parents come to me, and if their kid gets in trouble, they want to bail them out of jail and stuff like that. Right, yeah. And I say, let the pig pen do its work. Ooh. There you go. And it's a simple, it's a simple right. concept, yeah, yeah. but there right. are times mm -hmm. where if your kid spends a week in jail, mm -hmm. yeah. that's a pretty powerful message. And it, and it doesn't yeah. mean you don't love, if you really love me, you'd yeah. bail me out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would oh. rescue me. And yeah. some of the best lessons I've learned in life, I learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. I did a documentary mm -hmm. once when I was working Very television good. news. Did a documentary on a girl who became a drug addict and an alcoholic mm -hmm. in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was doing this story with her, she was 17. And the crux of that story was how that she had been out drugging and drinking and she got arrested mm -hmm. and was in jail and she called asking her mom to get her out and her mother let her stay in jail for the weekend. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and this girl had recovered since then. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm doing the interview with her, I took her downtown in Toledo, Ohio, yep. mm -hmm. to jail cell number 12, oh. where she was. Sure. Oh. And she yes. talked about how when That's the powerful. door mm -hmm. shut yep. mm -hmm. and she heard that lock turn, mm -hmm. She began right. to come to her senses. There you just what you exactly. were talking about. Let the pig pen do its work. Yeah, let Isn't the pig pen do its work. And, and, and you know, that girl got out <laughs> yeah. of that situation 
and went to college, went to the University of Toledo, became a psychologist for children and that kind of yeah. thing, yeah. turned her life around. Yeah. One of my great Amen. concerns today, Bill, uh, as I look back, we're similar in age. Very short on time, though. Um, <laughs> the, the costs of mistakes today uh -huh. mm -hmm. seem to me are much greater mm -hmm. than they were in my generation yeah, in the penalty, 70s. Yeah, the costs right. of mistakes. Which can just out not make a parent so fearful. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Well, we're out of time, but thank I, you very much. And uh, time is all up. Oh, I'm getting the wrap up. So uh, we want to thank you for making the contributions you have, and we mm -hmm. certainly hope and pray that God will bless our audience. And we thank Amen. you, audience, for tuning in. We'll be back with this same panel again next week. Mm -hmm. So if you like them today, you're going to love them next week. <laughs> so tune in again. <laughs> to this. I'm Bill Harris. God bless you for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.